if you own a bearded dragon, then there are 10 deadly diseases that you need to watch out for. Some of these can be fatal if left untreated, but the good news is most of them are completely preventable. Stay tuned to learn what they are and how to keep your bearded dragon happy and healthy. What's poppin' everyone and welcome back to the channel. I know, been a while since my last educational video. Sorry, just got caught up with life and academics, but I'm officially back to giving you weekly videos. If you're new here, what's up? My name's Roque. I'm a fifth year vet student studying here at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and part-time content creator. And this is my co-host, Hobie. Last time I showed him on the channel, he was just a little baby and now he is a fully grown adult. And I have him with me today because today we'll be discussing the 10 most common bearded dragon diseases that every owner should know. In this video, I'll be breaking down the causes, symptoms, and most importantly, how to prevent them from ever even happening. And if you want the best bearded dragon care tips coming from a vet student, then make sure to stick till the end. All right, so first up is the most common and preventable disease, metabolic bone disease or MBD. This is by far the most common disease that vets see at a clinic and this basically occurs when your bearded dragon doesn't get enough calcium, vitamin D3, and or UV exposure. You see, calcium, vitamin D3, and UV have a very strong and dependent relationship on one another and if even one of these are imbalanced, it may cause your bearded dragon to be predisposed to metabolic bone disease. Symptoms include soft rubbery bones, swelling, and the inability to walk. And it's honestly a terrible disease that is extremely painful. And the worst part is it's actually untreatable once it's been diagnosed. But the best part about it is that it's completely preventable. You can prevent this by providing your bearded dragon with the proper UV exposure. So I like the linear T5 UV bulbs because it has the best output of UV rays. Also, you need to give your bearded dragon calcium supplements and make sure to gut load your bugs or your feeder insects because whatever goes into your bugs goes into your beardy. For more info on diet, you can actually check out my video right here. Next up, we have respiratory infections. And these typically happen when your bearded dragon is kept in damp and cold environments. You have to remember that bearded dragons come from the dry outback of Australia, meaning that you need to keep them in very dry, very hot, and in a well-ventilated environment. Some of the symptoms of respiratory infections include wheezing when your bearded dragon is breathing, any fluid buildup in the nostrils or in the mouth, or if you see your bearded dragon gasping for air, those are probably signs of a respiratory infection and you should bring your bearded dragon to the vet ASAP. And to prevent this from ever happening to your beardy, make sure that you clean your enclosure regularly, make sure that you maintain proper temperature levels, um, specifically 35 degrees Celsius on the basking or hot side and around 25 degrees Celsius on the cooler side and keeping the humidity, you know, about 40%. At number three, we have impaction. Impaction happens when your bearded dragon's digestive tract gets clogged and this results in inappetence or the lack of appetite and constipation. Symptoms of impaction include a significantly swollen belly, as in like it's swollen and looks like a balloon, um, lack of appetite, and constipation. Impaction is another frustrating disease for vets to see in practice, mainly because it's completely preventable and it's as easy as nailing down your husbandry and smashing the like and subscribe button. Next up, we have parasitic infections. So these endoparasites like coccidia and pinworms can cause weight loss, lethargy, diarrhea, and lack of appetite. And these are typically picked up from dirty enclosures or infected feeder insects. Now, this is actually a bit of a polarizing topic, mainly because while it is very common to see these coccidia and other endoparasites in fecal exams in a clinic, new studies are actually showing that some of these Parasites and organisms are actually commensals to your bearded dragon's digestive system. Now, what do commensals mean? This basically means that these organisms are naturally found in your bearded dragon's digestive system. So that means that 
if it comes out in the fecal exam, it doesn't necessarily mean that your bearded dragon is sick. Only when it's in an overwhelming quantity when it should be of concern. Okay, a bit overkill for now, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to learn more about this specific topic. So to prevent severe parasitic infections from happening, make sure you clean the enclosure regularly and bring your vet, bring your vet, to bring your pet to the vet at least once a year for deworming or when symptoms show themselves. And for the love of Godzilla, do not deworm your bearded dragon on your own. Again, listen, do not deworm your bearded dragon on your own. And I'm not just saying this because I'm studying to be a vet. I'm saying this because too little of a dose can actually make the parasites resistant to the dewormer, which causes an entirely new problem. Or too high of a dose can just straight up kill your bearded dragon. So please, leave the deworming to your vets. At number five, we have mouth rot. Mouth rot is basically when there's an infection in your bearded dragon's mouth and it can cause inflammation of the gums and even pus buildup, which is really, really painful and can prevent your bearded dragon from eating. And one of the primary causes of mouth rot is giving your bearded dragon too much sugary foods. And an interesting fact about bearded dragons is that they have no true teeth, meaning that those little jagged edges that you think are teeth in their mouth are actually part of its jaw and that's what they use to break down their food so basically once that gets infected once that's affected your bearded dragon will not be able to eat because you can't just pluck out the teeth you'll have to remove the whole jaw which is a big no-no so basically when you give too much sugary foods it makes your bearded dragon's mouth more prone to glucose loving or sugar loving bacteria which can cause the infection so to prevent mouth rot, simply ensure that you're feeding your bearded dragon the proper diet. Next up, we have obesity. Now, while it may not seem like a disease, this is actually one of the most common problems that vets see bearded dragons have at the clinic. And it's simply because the owners are feeding them too much food. Look, we get it. You have good intentions. You want to make your bearded dragon happy with a full belly. But overfeeding it super worms like very high in fat feeder insects. It's like basically giving it McDonald's every day. While they are very happy and will gladly eat it, you know it's really bad for them. When your beardy becomes severely overweight, it makes them prone to fatty liver disease, which causes a cascade of other problems in the metabolic system or overall health of your beardy, and it severely diminishes the life expectancy of your beardy. So to prevent this from ever even happening, make sure you feed your bearded dragon a balanced diet with leafy greens and weigh your bearded dragon regularly to ensure that they are within normal range with respect to their age. At seven, we have the most common disease for humid climates like here in the Philippines. As you can see, I'm sweating balls right now, but it is none other than yellow fungus. So yellow fungus is a contagious fungal infection that causes yellow, crusty lesions on the skin. Symptoms can vary and it can actually sometimes be confused with the natural yellow undertone of your bearded dragon. But if you notice behavioral changes plus the yellow coloration of the skin, it's best to bring your beardy to the vet as soon as possible. You see, this disease spreads fast and requires immediate vet treatment. So, if you have other reptiles in the room or in your house, make sure to quarantine the one that is suspected for yellow fungus. Next up, we have kidney diseases. This is actually a hard disease to diagnose solely off the appearance and behavior and the only real way to properly diagnose if your bearded dragon has kidney disease is by performing a reptile blood chemistry analysis at your nearest vet clinic. But some of the common symptoms are generalized weakness and sunken eyeballs or basically when the eyeball looks like it's deep into the skull and not really where it needs to be or is typically at. There are many reasons as to why a beardy gets kidney disease but in terms of pet keeping, if it is in fact your fault and not metabolic in nature, it's usually due to dehydration. So while you might think, oh, the main cause is dehydration, I'll just put water into the enclosure. No, I would actually advise against that, mainly because putting water in the enclosure raises the humidity level and makes them more prone to respiratory infections. So instead, I would suggest feeding them more moisture-dense foods like squash. Oh, and also gut-loading your feeder insects. 
Next up, we have eye infections. And eye infections typically happen when there's poor humidity levels within the enclosure. If an enclosure is too dry, it can actually cause stuck shed around the eyes, causing an infection. While if it's too humid, on the other hand, it can actually predispose your beardy to having aerobic infections around the eye, much like the respiratory infections. But some things to look out for is if your bearded dragon's eye appears swollen or it's just closing their eyes the entire time or if it has even discharge or like some liquid coming out of the eye. And again, the best way to prevent this is by providing proper humidity levels within the enclosure. And for the last most common disease we see in the clinic is stuck shed. And much like the eye and respiratory infections, this typically happens due to poor husbandry. And this happens when there is not enough moisture in your bearded dragon's environment, which causes the shed, because uh, as you know, bearded dragons shed every so often. And if the humidity levels are too low, it actually causes it to constrict the limb and cutting off circulation and blood supply, which will eventually lead to that limb or finger completely dying. And you can tell that there's stuck shed when you notice like a little bit grayish of a skin or scale pattern that you see on your beardy when the rest of the body has been able to shed effectively. Now, in my experience, this typically doesn't really happen in humid habitats like the Philippines, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it can't happen. So to prevent this from ever even occurring, make sure you soak your bearded dragon in lukewarm water with electrolytes. They sell those little ReptiZoo electrolyte uh, bearded dragon soak products. I'm pretty sure you can find it on Shopee, Amazon, or wherever you do your online shopping and to provide enough moisture in their diet. And that wraps up our list. Remember, education is a lifelong journey and there's always more to learn about your pet. You see, I'm already a vet student and I can confidently say that I still don't know everything there is to know about the perfect care for my bearded dragon, Hobie. But I'm continuously learning and more importantly, improving every single day. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And if you want to keep your bearded dragon happy and healthy like Hobie, make sure to watch this bearded dragon care tips. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one. Deuces!